I have been getting a lot of requests on a video on how to embed different things. So I thought I would go over some of the most common items with you guys today. I've got some chunky glitter, chunky dry glitter. I have some foil and I also have some 3D metal pieces, like the little alloy pieces that you can put on nails and some little beads and stuff that we can put on there. So I'm gonna go through how I would personally do this. Um, there are lots of techniques and honestly, as you work and as you practice, you're going to find your own techniques as well, okay? All right, let's start with dry glitter. I've got a nail already with a coordinating gel polish color on it doesn't have to be coordinating but I do find if you kind of want that full coverage glitter look you're going to want to choose a color that is the same color family and also maybe even slightly darker than the glitter you're going to put on there but basically what I try and do is just pick a, a gel polish color that if it shines through my glitter it's going to match the glitter color that I've chosen okay there are two ways to do this one is the dry method which basically means you put some gel on the nail and then you sprinkle the glitter over, cure it, and then figure out what to do from there. I'm gonna show you this way first. I don't like this particular method because it just ends up with glitter everywhere, um, but I will show you this method really quick. Okay, so essentially what you would do is you're going to want to pick a gel that has a nice kind of thicker consistency. So I'm gonna use this as an example. This is, um, it can be top coat. Um, it can also be like a builder gel if you want. The only thing is you're going to want something that remains nice and clear when you're using it. And you don't want something that gets like yellow or cloudy or anything like that because it'll end up impacting the way that your, your glitter looks. You also want something that is thick. So the reason being is because when I put this on the nail, I don't want it to slip and slide. So can you see how, let me see if I can show you guys better. Can you see how this is not runny at all? Like it's not dripping on my table, it's sticking to the brush. Okay. In comparison, let's look at a really, really, really thin gel. All right, this one, you can see like when I take my, my brush out of the bottle, it immediately starts dripping. Oh, and I'll even drip some on my, my table here. But can you see how it's just like super, super, super runny? You don't want a super runny gel because what's gonna happen is exactly this, which is it's going to dribble down off of the nail. It's gonna fall to the sides. So we want something a little bit thicker, okay? I made a little bit of a mess on my table, but not a big deal. All right, so let's go back to my nice pink nail. Also, typically, what you would do is you're going to apply this after you've cured your last layer of color and before your top coat because we don't want to add unnecessary layers and create too much thickness on the nail. So by doing this in, like right before our top coat, it basically eliminates another layer of top coat that we would have had to add later, and that way I end up with one less layer of product. Hope that makes sense to everyone. Also, if you're using a super high coverage glitter and you just need a little bit of color on the background, you can also just apply one coat of color. So the whole goal is the chunkier the item that we're going to put on the nail, the thinner we want our application to be. So we want to strategize how many layers of product are we putting on the nail and what can we can do to get away with the minimum so that by the time we do all of this glitter application and embed everything, we're not gonna end up with like a super, super thick nail, okay? So this nail is really nice and thin already, and I'm going to put this glitter on top. So to start, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thicker gel, okay? So I'm using um, Ultra Glossy Non-Wipe Top Coat. I do like to use non-wipes if I'm gonna sprinkle glitter into it because it just eliminates that tacky stickiness. What's nice about it is that any spaces in between the glitter will automatically be clean and dry when they come out of the lamp. And if I'm gonna finish file, I don't have to worry about like getting my nail file all gummed up and stuff like that. So using a, a non-wipe um, gel is really nice and you know top coat, but you want that top coat to be thicker. You don't want it to be runny and drippy, okay? 
So I'm just gonna apply a nice kind of medium thick layer. You don't want it to be paper, paper thin because you also need something for the glitter to be able to kind of stick into, right? So if we do it too thin, especially with chunkier glitters, it's gonna be really hard for that glitter to stick. Okay, so I've got that wet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my glitter and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. Now you can, I'm not worried about this because I'm just doing this on camera, I'm gonna toss this table towel, but you can absolutely put like a little bit of paper or whatever you want underneath your work area if you wanna be able to sprinkle the excess glitter back into the jar and you don't wanna waste your glitter, by all means, go ahead and do that, okay? So all you're gonna do is sprinkle the glitter over the wet nail, make sure it's covered from side to side, and right before it goes in the lamp, I like to take a spatula or a clean brush and tuck in any pieces that are sticking out on the edges. It just makes your life a little bit easier after it comes out of the lamp. And you can also check like from the profile, any bits that are sticking out on the top just take a quick peek and tuck everything in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna cure this in my lamp. And this particular gel cures for 30 seconds. So I'll put that there. Okay. Now again, you're gonna have a glittery mess and this is part of the reason why I don't like doing it this way. I don't like the dry method. So while that nail is curing, I'm gonna quickly move this. So I've got a nice clean space for you guys. And I'm gonna show you my preferred method. So my preferred method is I make a glitter gel with the glitter that I want to use. So I am going to take the same top coat. The nice thing also about mixing it is you can literally use whatever gel you want. I would recommend using a slightly thicker one. So just to make a small amount, okay, I'm just going to put a couple dollops of gel on my palette and then I'm going to sprinkle in about maybe a little bit less than an equal amount of glitter. And you can do this a little bit of a at a time to make sure that you've got the mixture right. So again, I'm just gonna mix this in. I need a little bit more. It should be pretty well chunky. And you can also make mixes too. So you can mix two or three different colors of glitter or like a small, medium, and large glitter, whatever you want. You basically want it to be about that consistency where it kind of holds its shape a little bit when you're messing with it. You don't want it to be really, really dry, but you do want it to kind of stay opaque when you're mixing it. And then all you're gonna do is take your glitter gel brush and you can apply this. So let me just show you really quick on this other nail tip that I have. All right, so I've got the glitter gel mix on my, my brush. And so now what I can do is I can just push this around as if it were just like a potted glitter gel. And I can paint the whole nail with glitter. Okay, now I like this method better because you'll see that the glitter pieces get naturally encapsulated with gel so you're not gonna have little spikies. You might have lumps and bumps, which you can fix, but you're gonna have lumps and bumps regardless. But what I mean is you're not gonna have like sharp pieces poking out um, that have to be filed down or you're gonna struggle encapsulating. And the other thing I like about it is obviously the finger stays nice and clean. My work area stays nice and clean because everything stays sequestered on the palette. And I have the ability to change my application as well. So if I want to like just, you know, concentrate some on this side and then sprinkle it, you know, whatever, you can absolutely do whatever you want, okay? So I personally prefer to do the palette method, which is where you pre-mix your glitter and your gel together. It just makes for a much cleaner work area, keeps your lamp clean, keeps your table clean, everything stays nice and clean, and I just think it gives you much more control. That's my humble opinion. All right, so let's say you did the dry method you have your finger out of the lamp. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your scrubby brushes. I recommend you use one that isn't, mine are so dusty, I'm sorry. I don't, 
I don't use these on clients. So when you see me use these on camera, just ignore the fact that Liz has a dusty manicure brush because if this were for a client, I would be sanitizing these. They would not be dusty at all. They would be perfectly sanitized in my quads and super, super clean because I don't put anything dirty on people's skin. But for the purposes of like my nail art videos, I just use whatever brush I've got close by, okay? So forgive me for that. Um, but what you would do is you would take a nice, clean, dry manicure brush. And again, you're gonna wanna separate those out from the ones that you use for like manicuring because they sometimes do get glitter stuck in. And you're gonna brush off the excess glitter, okay? And you can see if I zoom in here, kind of how it's got a lot of texture on it. It's very pretty, but it just has a lot of texture, okay? And if I rub my finger on this, I can feel it's very, very, very bumpy. So if I had pre-mixed my glitter with my gel, I wouldn't have such a bumpy nail, and I wouldn't have little things like this guy up in here that's kind of sticking out, you know, or any like rough pieces up by the cuticle area. So sometimes you, you're going to want to go around with like a little tool and just kind of scrape off any of those residual pieces that are wanting to come off and just gently, you know, scrub the nail clean and get all of that off. But it is going to make a mess. So just keep that in mind. Okay. And the finer the glitter, kind of the more messy it, it is. All right. So I've got this textured, cured, non-sticky as far as because I used my non-wipe gel, um, but I've still got this very, very textured layer that I now want to encapsulate because I want this nail to be perfectly smooth. I mean, you can absolutely, if you like texture, you can leave it, but I have to be honest, those dry glitter nails, they get real old real fast because as soon as you shower or something or you go to wipe your hands on a towel, all of these little pieces of glitter are gonna catch on fibers in your clothing, in your towels, in your hair, whatever. It's really annoying. So. I don't like to leave them textured. And most clients, if you're working on clients, don't like textured nails either. Okay, so how do we fix this? All right, so if you're using a thicker top coat to begin with, like this one, then you're golden and you can just use this product. If not, what you can do is use like either a builder in a bottle or a potted builder gel like I've shown you guys here on the channel multiple times, and then you can use a top coat afterwards. I'm gonna show you guys how I would do this with a builder gel because I want you guys to also see like how I would finish file this because typically you're gonna finish file after you encapsulate anything. Okay, so when we encapsulate, you, what you wanna do is do that wet layer first. And if you have watched any of my previous videos, you have probably seen that I do a wet layer for almost anything. And with this wet layer, you're gonna to wanna to go slow because you don't wanna get bubbles in between the pieces of glitter. If you're doing glitter on a black nail, you will absolutely see bubbles much more vividly than if you're doing kind of a red or you know a different color that doesn't show that as much. So just do it nice and slow, nice kind of you know thin to medium coating on the nail, nice wet layer. See, it's not thick, but see, it's already looking smoother, okay? Then I'm gonna go back, and this is where the encapsulation begins. Encapsulation just means you're gonna bury whatever it is inside of gel, you're gonna encapsulate it in gel. So I'm gonna put a nice bead on my brush. You can use potted gel as well, I'm just doing bottled today, it doesn't matter, okay? And then I'm gonna do my structure and my smoothing and everything over top of that nice wet layer, all right? And then I can use my, my line of light to make sure that this is nice and smooth. And if I want, I can turn the finger upside down. You can see it's got fuzz and glitter on it. Turn the finger upside down. I'm just gonna do this really quick and cure it so I can show you all. And, um, and you're gonna make like a nice swoop and I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so here is my nail with the cured builder gel on top. So now can you see that with that wet layer and my bead, just like I've done for every other type of overlay or extension, I'm adding a little bit of an apex, even on a natural nail I would do this because it adds strength and it adds, I think, beauty to the nail. Having a little bit of an arch on here is really nice. Same thing if I look at it, you know, down the barrel, I have the concentration of product here in the center. It's not a lot, but just a little bit of an apex really makes nails look nice, okay? And you can see I've got a teeny piece of glitter stuck up in here, but whatever, we'll just ignore that for now. Look, I'll even push. I made it disappear. Okay. So just that little bit of an apex I think looks really, really nice. And you can also see that the nail is nice and glossy and smooth. 
It's only got a teeny bit of roughness here on the sidewalls, which is not a big deal. So you've got two options here. You can say, this is perfect and put top coat on it and then deal with any roughness later. Or you can cleanse the nail and you can finish file this to make sure that it's perfectly smooth. Okay, so you're gonna lose some of the shine now because this is like a builder gel. So I'm just gonna cleanse this. And then when you finish file, you can use your e-file or a hand file, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna take like a 180 grit nail file and now you can actually file any little bits where you feel like there's roughness or thickness or anything. And sometimes you might even have like a little bit of like one piece of glitter sticking through the surface. Okay, so I've got that filed. Now what I'm gonna do is cleanse it one more time. You can use a scrubby brush if you want to, if you don't wanna use fuzz, you know, if you don't wanna use like a, a wipe or something, even lint-free wipes sometimes have a little bit of fuzz. So you can use like a, you know, your manicure brush and some cleanser if you want to. Um, so I'm gonna cleanse that. And then what you're gonna see is see all the scratches now on the surface. If I were to put top coat straight on this, sometimes the top coat will not actually camouflage or seal in all those scratches perfectly. You'll see a little bit of them. So here's a trick that I like to do. I like to take a non-acid primer. Um, I've used several on this channel. Uh, Luminary Commit, um, Young Nails Protein Bond, Light Elegance Tack, Accents, A Fix It. Um, I mean, you name it. Anything that says like protein bonder or non-acid primer is gonna work great. And the reason why is because it's gonna be a very, very thin product that's gonna seep in those cracks and it's gonna eliminate all of those little scratches. So I love to do this before I put top coat on if I'm encapsulating and finish filing because it just gets rid of any of those little scratches, fill lines, whatever, okay? So it seeps into all those little teeny, teeny scratches on the surface. And then when I put my top coat on, it's gonna be perfectly, perfectly glass shiny. I'm not gonna have anything that I can see through the top coat. That's just one extra little step that I wanted to tell you guys about because it does make a huge difference. So just give that a second to dry, make sure it dries. Don't use too much, just super, super sparingly on the surface of the product only. This isn't for adhesion, it's just for filling in those little lines and you just want a super, super thin product to be able to do that. You could also use like a sanding free base coat. The thinner the product, the better it's gonna seep into those little cracks, okay? So then I'm gonna apply my top coat as I normally would, just a nice thin coat. I've already done all of my smoothing and all of my building of the, the nail and the shape and everything, so I don't need to go crazy. I just want a nice, smooth, even application of top coat, okay? and then I'm gonna do my final cure. Okay, there you have it. So I've got a perfectly encapsulated glitter nail. The glitter is inside, which also makes it look really nice. This is very iridescent glitter, so it might be a little bit harder to see on camera, but you can see those pieces underneath. You can also see my ring of light on top is always a perfect oval. That lets me know that this nail is perfectly smooth on the surface, which is what you wanna look for. So whether you have a, a line of light, like from a um, like one of those bar lamps, or if you have a round bulb, or if you have a ring light, or whatever you're using, you wanna use that reflection to see that the nail is perfectly, perfectly smooth, okay? And then last step, if this was a real client, what I would do is I would put some cuticle oil on, rub it in, and use your fingers on every single nail to make sure that you don't feel any pieces sticking out. If you do, all you need to do is go back and just file off that little spot and cleanse the nail really well, put one more layer of top coat and then repeat. Um, but it's just nice to make sure that everything's super, super smooth. And this feels like glass, it is so smooth, okay? So you can see actually, if I pull the, the nail out, this is just a practice finger. but we completely encapsulated all of that glitter inside of there. Okay, so that is how I encapsulate glitter. Um, this is the dry method, obviously, and then I also showed you guys how to make your own custom glitter mixes, which is much easier because there's just less mess and less filing, but you can do it either way. Okay, so let me also bring out a different finger. Okay, so here I've got a different color of gel polish. And I just 
threw on some gel polish here and I am going to show you guys how I use foil. So this is like that super, super fine metallic foil. Um, I know this is very popular. Now, one thing I will tell you is the higher the quality of foil that you use, the less like it's going to be that it's going to oxidize and tarnish on you. If you buy really, really, really cheap foil, um, and I mean like 99 cents, um, which I know a lot of nail art stuff on Wish or AliExpress or eBay or whatever has cheap foil like that. The problem is, is that any teeny, teeny amount of oxygen that gets in there is going to turn your foil green over time. And that happens both to the silver and the gold, more so the gold. Um, but it can also change the color of your actual gel polish as well. So try and get, you know, some, usually, usually you get what you pay for. So if, if it's like foil that costs somewhere around five bucks, maybe a little bit more, I know that sounds expensive, but it's going to make a huge difference in how it lasts. Okay, so this foil is, it's like gold leaf. It's very, very, very thin, super easy to tear. And it also will stick to your hands super easily. So I usually always wear gloves when I'm doing people's nails, but you might also wanna wear gloves when you use something like this. Okay, so it's just very, very thin foil. All right, so with the foil, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna actually apply it on the cured sticky inhibition layer of your gel polish. That's how I like to apply it. So since this is already gel polished up and it's not um, sticky anymore, I'm gonna put one more layer of gel down just to have something to stick into it, okay? And it really doesn't matter what it is. You can put it into, again, we wanna minimize the amount of layers that we're putting on the nail. So I would recommend that you do it after your second coat of color, so after you cure your second coat of color, you're going to um, apply the foil right into that sticky layer. But since I pre-prepped these nails, I'm just gonna put a very, very thin coat of clear gel down and I'm gonna cure this. And it really doesn't matter if it's top coat or anything, you just wanna make sure that it does cure with an inhibition layer, that it cures with a sticky layer. And something that is kind of sticky when it cures. So this is where it comes in handy knowing knowing your products really well, like knowing which gels that you own cure really tacky, which ones, you know, don't, stuff like that. All right, so let me cure that. And then with the foil, I usually use tweezers with this. So if you have a pair of nail art tweezers, I usually use tweezers, okay? It just makes it a lot easier. And all you're gonna do is just tear off some small pieces and put them on your table towel, okay? Just like that. Okay, so I just ripped off a couple pieces, put them on my table, and then I'm just gonna put all of this back because I don't really need all of that. Now, depending on the length of nail you're doing, you might need more, you might need less, it just depends. Okay, so here is my nail. It is sticky. You can see that this stuff just wants to stick to anything. It's almost like staticky. That's how bad it is. So I have my sticky inhibition layer, and then I'm just gonna put the foil on there. Now I like to push it down first, and then I tear it up and separate it. So with my same tweezers, I can place it, I can flatten it out on the nail as much as possible, and then I can kind of break it up and start to kind of separate it into pieces. You can also take a bigger piece if you want and touch down and it will stick, but you just wanna be cautious because I mean, you can see how sticky this stuff is. It just takes nothing and it sticks really, really well. Okay, and this is really where the finessing begins is just like, you know, you deciding what you think looks good, how much gold you want on the nail, you know, how tiny you want the little pieces to be Stuff like that. So we can spread this around, just kind of tapping as I go, okay? So all I'm doing is kind of just, you know, if something's stuck to my tweezers, it's totally fine. I just use the other side of my tweezers. That's why I like using tweezers. And then I can use the side of my tweezers to kind of separate the pieces. And I just kind of push this on here. And if this is someone's finger, you can even like, you know, use your other hand 
like that, okay? Just keep it away from the sidewalls and the cuticle area because we need to be able to completely encase this in gel or, you know, encapsulate, that's where the word comes from. We're encasing, we're burying it, encapsulating it, whatever. You can put a little bit more down here. And you can see how annoying this stuff is. It just sticks to everything. It's just because it's so thin and so fine. It's just like working with people like work with, you know, gold leaf and such. Okay. Okay. So then once you're happy with the placement, what I like to do is I clean off, I just kind of like wipe my tweezers to get off any excess foil and any excess stickiness. And then same thing as I did with my glitter, I'm going to look at the nail from all angles. I'm going to gently press down any areas where it's sticking out. Okay. Now, for those of you that watched my previous video about the inhibition layer, you guys all understand now that the inhibition layer is uncured gel and it's uncured because it was exposed to oxygen during the curing process. Okay. So before I encapsulate this gel, now that I've got foil covering certain spots on the nail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this nail back in my lamp, even just for like 10 to 15 seconds, because what that's going to do is the gel that's underneath these foil pieces, that inhibition layer is now going to cure and it's really going to kind of lock in these foil pieces. That way, when I go to put my top coat on, my top coat isn't going to be pulling these pieces and moving them around. So if you're really happy with your placement, then you want to kind of lock in the placement of these foil pieces. And you can do that just by going back in and curing it for an additional 10 seconds. All right. And there you have the finished product. So all of the pieces are encapsulated inside. The nail is perfectly smooth to the touch. And even on the cuticle and sidewalls, when I rub it with my hand, I don't feel anything. Now, if you feel anything sharp on the edges of the nail, you can totally finish file that really, really lightly to make sure that those are all encased as well. But this is perfectly glass smooth. And the one thing you want to watch out for is make sure that you do actually check if all of the pieces of foil are encapsulated because you, like I said, you don't want them to tarnish. You don't want them to change color over time. And even with, you know, pretty much any type of gel this happens to, but especially with soak off gels, soak off gels do wear down over time. So if you were to wear a nail for two, three weeks, you know, this gel around the corners and stuff, you want to make sure that it's absolutely encapsulating this foil because it will wear down over time and it will actually break through and you'll start to get some separation or you'll start to get some, you know, this foil exposed to the elements. And so with water and air, you know, you can start to get some tarnishing here on the edges. So just triple check your work, you know, make sure you run your finger over the entire nail surface really well around the corners and the free edge to make sure that all of that product is well encased in product. Um, and, you know, as per usual, like I usually do that when I apply my cuticle oil. So I put cuticle oil on the skin um, and then I rub everything in. And as I'm rubbing, I'm checking my work to make sure that the nails feel perfectly smooth. All right, last but not least, I've got another fresh nail here. Last but not least, what if I want to apply some 3D pieces? Now, I'm talking about the type of 3D pieces that you can actually encase in product. We'll get into some bigger stuff later, but I wanted to show you some of the typical things. Now, one of the most common is when you have like a little metal alloy piece like this that are 3D. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're like hearts, snowflakes, whatever. You can get them on almost any website. Um, and they are like, you know, just little, little pieces of alloy metal. Okay. So what if I want to encase those and like some little beads and stuff like that? So I've got also some, some 3D gold button beads that have flat backs on them. They're kind of like cabochons. Um, so what do I do if I want to put those on a nail? Because that is also very common. A lot of clients, um, or even if you're doing this on yourself, a lot of what's popular is to 
you know, have just kind of a simple manicure, but then at the cuticle area to put a little gem or a little triangle or something cute. And the trick is making sure that that stays on and also making it kind of user friendly for people that don't like having 3D objects on their nails. So in this particular situation, I recommend that you finish the entire manicure. So that means do all of your your base application, two coats of color, you know, whatever painted nail art, whatever you're doing, and then top coat, finish it with top coat, and then you're going to apply your little 3D pieces. The reason being is it can be very difficult to work over that inhibition layer of your color with 3D pieces because there may be a little bit of pigment that you pick up as you're moving them around. So I usually recommend, you know, either apply these 3D pieces um, on your tacky top coat, or even if you finish the entire nail, I'm gonna show you guys how you do that, okay? So if I'm gonna go back, I've got cured clean gel on this nail. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna apply my little pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back and in the area that I'm going to apply them, I'm just gonna etch the top coat ever so slightly just to give my gel that I'm gonna put on something to grip to, okay? And again, if you're applying this onto the sticky inhibition layer of your top coat, you don't have to do this step. But I find that what happens to me a lot is people go through the whole thing. I'm trying to talk them into nail art. They say, no, no, no. And then at the very end, after I've already cured their top coat and everything, they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do like one little gem. So this is where this comes into play. So just a little etching like that, just a little scratching of the surface is all you really need. And then you're going to want to use a nice thick gel for this. So I like a couple ones. Um, you can use, if you're working with small pieces, you can definitely use like a builder in a bottle type product. You can also use, you can use basically like any type of thick builder gel. You can use gels that are made for 3D art. Like this is one. Bling on is for um, anytime you want to use like a thicker nail art gel and you're going to apply little pieces or something bling on is great for that this is also great for crystals etc i'll just show you really quick what it looks like so it is a definitely a thicker product you can see like it doesn't even move in the jar and typically you apply this with a spatula so i like thicker gels when i put on little pieces if they're teeny teeny tiny you can get away with builder in a, in a bottle but the problem is is that when you're applying little beads if the gel is slippery or self-leveling, a lot of times they'll be slipping and sliding all over the nail and they'll be slipping and sliding inside of the lamp, which means that your placement isn't going to be where you think it is. So I like to use a slightly thicker gel. There's also one more that we have on the Nail Hub. It's called Gem Gel and it's actually a resin gel mix. So this one is also really nice because it's kind of more of like a glue gel than it is just a regular gel and I find that it holds things really well. Um, and it also glows in the lamp so that you can see if you've actually placed it around all of the little 3D pieces. So this works really well. All right, so here is my kind of scratched up nail. Zoom in for you all. Okay, now with a brush, usually if it's a small little area, I use a brush. If it's a big dollop that I need, I'll use a spatula. But I'm just gonna put like kind of a medium coating again, not too crazy thick because I don't want it to stick out but just kind of place it, you know, as if you were gonna glue down something, you're just gonna place a little layer of gel wherever you're gonna place those pieces, okay? Then I like to use something called a crystal katana. It has a specialty wax tip on it that makes picking up little things really, really, really easy. Um, my friend Kelly actually invented this and it's just an awesome tool. You can see like it just picks stuff up so easily. I'll show you really quick how cool this is. Okay, so here is my little piece. All right, so if I try and pick this up with tweezers, you know, nail art tweezers, like it's just, you know, you're constantly just like fighting with these things. With a katana, all I do is barely press it and it perfectly picks it up. Now there are definitely some cheap knockoffs of katanas, um, but I like to, you know, I like to support Kelly and her original design and her original idea instead of supporting nobodies who just cheat and steal other people's 
ideas. I like to, you know, support a friend who made something really cool. So that's why I like the original katana instead of some of those cheap knockoffs that I've seen. Okay, so my katana, I pick up the little piece. I just very gently tap the piece down into the gel and you can see the gel kind of like squishes up on the sides of this piece. That's what we want. We're going to encapsulate this anyway, but we want to just, you know, have a little bit of extra. And I also will leave a little bit of space back behind here because I don't want to have all that thickness right at the cuticle and I want to make sure that I can get top coat up and over and behind this piece, okay? So I need that room in between the piece and the cuticle area in order to be able to encapsulate this properly. And you can put like little beads with it, whatever you want. I just grabbed some random shapes because I know oh, these are very, very popular, these little alloy pieces. And then the metal end on the katana is actually for pushing stuff around and moving it because you don't want to get gel on your wax tip. So you just use the other end to move everything around. Okay, so you can create just like a little little cuticle area design, press everything down into that gel, and because I used a thicker gel, my pieces aren't slipping and sliding around on the nail surface. They stay exactly where I place them. I'm going to put a couple BB beads out here. And then the nice thing about using gel instead of glue is I can take my time and adjust everything into the perfect, perfect position. So if something's a little bit too high, a little bit too low, whatever, with gel, you can move it around and get that perfect, perfect, perfect placement. Now on camera, it looks like I have a huge space at the cuticle area, but in real life, I really don't. And I need that little bit of space to be able to get you know gel up and over, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cure this in my lamp for a full 30 seconds and then we're gonna encapsulate these. Okay, so this is all cured. Still looks kinda of lumpy because I've got that gel there. And even before you put in the lamp, if you didn't like this, you could blend it out into the nail so you don't have such a big lump, but I'm gonna encapsulate all of this anyway so it doesn't really matter to me. Now again, with any of these alloy pieces, especially if they're painted, um, any type of scratching or rubbing on them will take off the finish over time. So we really want to make sure that these, which they're usually made of like cheap metal or plastic, stuff like that, we want to make sure that they're protected over the two to three weeks that we're going to wear them and we don't want them to get worn out. Um, also strategically what you can do is don't place them on super dominant fingers like thumbs or pointers, put them on ring fingers, you know, pinky fingers, stuff like that where it's not going to be as big of an issue. You definitely want to take into consider placement. Um, but we want to make sure that all of these corners on these triangles are perfectly capped in so that any hair or anything doesn't get stuck anywhere on these. They don't get ripped off and they also don't change color. Okay. So um, just in order to show you something slightly different, since I've been using bottle gel this whole video, I'm going to show you the exact same thing, but with potted and my brush. Because I know a lot of you guys are really liking working with potted gel as well. Okay. So same thing. What I'm going to do is just I'm using kind of a self-leveling medium thick gel and you can see it holds my brush strokes. That's how you can kind of tell. Okay. So I want to very carefully go around the pieces and sometimes I do like using potted products or at least using, you know, my palette and a brush for this because it just allows you to get even closer around all of those. Okay, so we're just gonna do like a nice wet layer. Watch for bubbles. I've got a teeny bit of glitter in my brush, but it's okay. Try and get your brush where it's clean on one side. See, I've got, I've got it clean on the back. When you have it clean, it allows you to really get it up in behind where you're not touching the cuticle area, but you're able to deposit gel on the back side of those pieces. So this is why it's really important to leave a little bit of space on sidewalls and at the cuticle area because we want to make sure that we're able to actually encase all of this. Okay, 
So now I've got a nice careful wet layer. I have a little bit of lumpiness over here. This is my original gel inside. Okay, no big deal. Okay, so I've got everything nice and wet. You can see it's already starting to self-level in between these triangles and smoothing that out. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my same gel. I'm gonna put my bead. I'm gonna concentrate it right over the center of this design. And then all I'm gonna do is just walk it down the center and let it self-level. Okay, and I don't need any really at the tip. I just need it to kind of self-level and give me a nice arch. So give it a second. You can kind of finesse it into place if you need to. I like to just give it a second. It'll self-level on its own and see my nice round light. It's gonna get bumpy where those little triangles are, but I've got a nice smooth nail as far as the gel is concerned. If you wanna put a little bit more gel, all you have to do is dip your brush and just touch down in the area where you wanna deposit more and let it self-level, okay? So just give it a second. And then if you want to, again, you can also turn the finger upside down, concentrate that product in a nice arch, and then cure. All right, so there is the cured nail. It's still sticky. So now I have, um, I can put whatever top coat I wanna to put on top. I can do a no cleanse, I can do a cleansing top coat, it doesn't really matter. You can see there's still some texture up here around the beads, but you can see that there's gel actually all around them and that they're kind of part of the nail now. So if I show you guys from the side, can you see how they're like part of the actual nail surface now? There's no point sticking up or corners or anything like that. And you can see right there, they're actually inside of the gel, even though there's texture. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is just go over this with a no cleanse top coat. I really like no cleanse top coats because it just makes my life easier. I don't have to whip out any wipes or anything. I'm just done. But if your favorite top coat, you have to cleanse it, then it's okay. Sometimes it's worth the sacrifice. If you have a top coat that you really love, even if you have to clean it, I mean, sometimes it's just, it's worth it, okay? And at this point, all I'm trying to do is just give the nail some shine. I'm not worried about actually encapsulating anything anymore. If you did see an area where you've got a little bit of like gel missing, or you're like, oh my gosh, I need to put a little bit more there, then use your top coat also to fix that. You know, I always like to say like move forward in your appointment. So if there's a little spot that you messed up, you know, when you did your encapsulation piece, use your top coat to fix it and keep moving, keep trucking. All right, so there you have it. Here are the three designs we just did, all encapsulating different types of things. We did the dry glitter, we did some foil, some chunky foil, and we also did some 3D pieces. And again, this is all cleansed, nice and smooth. You can feel a little bit of texture on the beads on the side, stuff like that, but I mean, it is very encapsulated. See on this bead on there, you can see a little bit of texture, but the gel transitions nicely into the rest of the nail, and you can see that nice oval of light on my nail surface just lets me know that these nails are very nice and smooth, even though I encapsulated a bunch of product in them. So here are three simple nail art ideas that do encompass encapsulating things inside of the gel and how to do it. I hope this helps you guys because I know this has been something you guys have been asking for and um, I hope this helps you do a better job with your gel nail surfaces. And at the end of the day, you know, just focus on doing pretty dang good nails because you know, there's always gonna be a little something something and you're always gonna learn and, and kind of grow with each nail service that you do. So if you have, you know, your first time you do 3D little pieces like this, one of them pops off, you know, after a week, then just learn from that and realize that, hey, you know, I need to think about placement. I need to think about how much gel I'm putting over the surface. You know, there's always a learning opportunity. And the best way you can learn is not only understand what you're trying to achieve, but also just practice. Okay. So I hope this helps you guys. And I will be back in touch with you guys again soon. All right. Bye.